Hey guys, Xboxer here. Received the parts in, and now we're going to commence replacing all of the input FETs. And what I'm going to try to show here, if I can do this with one hand, is here's the burnt FET. And right now we're getting about 321 ohms, which is actually pretty low. Uh, definitely, obviously, that one is shorted out. In fact, if I can focus in on it, don't have my macro lens, guys, sorry. Um, it's pretty much cracked in half. Now, the one that I have it connected to right here, it may not look burned, but it obviously it looks a little singed on the top. And if I am to check that, I'm getting about 1.6 ohms, so that one is short of two. And pretty much the entire bank of these things is completely destroyed. So uh, all of them do need to re be replaced. Okay, so what I'm going to be do is replace them with, it's an IRF3205 PBF, which is pretty much the exact stock that uh, is inside this uh, inverter right now. We have HRF3205s in there, so this is about as uh, equal of a uh, replacement part as I can find. Now, I'm going to use my Hako 308 desoldering gun, which is one of the best tools I've ever gotten. Uh, and it's got, it's got it, uh, like obviously a heated tip here. It's got a little reservoir in the middle here that you can empty out and a built-in pump so you can suck away the solder once it's uh, heated up. And let's see how well I can do it for this one. Now I'm going to try and hold the camera in frame as I do that and just to show you how easy it is to get these things removed okay and without any major editing of the camera And there you go. So I'll have to do that for all the input FETs. Hopefully it shouldn't take me too long. I think what's going to take me longer is actually replacing and resoldering uh, the new components to the board. But this should give me a good uh, idea to deal with what's going on here. Okay, as you could tell, it was, it was pretty good singe. I can't really see any of the trace. I don't think there's any trace on here. But let's kind of move forward and replace all these, this bank of FETs here and this bank of FETs right here. And here we have all the, FET, the input FETs removed. Uh, these were the ones that were testing good, but their uh, gates are a little bit on the lower side of the specifications. And those are all the burnt fets that I know are completely shorted. Now, the trace where that burn one happened, there's some trace piece right here, which I have to save. It actually went right there where the burnt piece is, and it just ties the one of its, uh, I think it's the emitter of the uh, transistor uh, resistor to ground here, and that's what burnt it out. So I'll just need to replace, uh, use that again and uh, tie that. Uh, back to the resistor once I replace it. But as you can see, if I can just get rid of the glare, guys, that Hako desoldering gun is an amazing tool. Uh, no damage at all, uh, very easy to remove. Also remove the uh, output FETs, which I don't have the right size nozzle for it. Um, that took a little bit more finesse. And those are right here which you know, I believe they're actually still good. And I probably am just gonna change it since I'm already in here and it was so much easier just to remove shotgun all the parts anyway. But uh, for sure that was definitely shorter just to give you a, take a look at the, uh, the bottom half of the board here and now I'll show you the top. All right, again, very nice and clean. I'm gonna have to clean this up with a toothbrush and some uh, vinegar get rid of the carbon trace, but uh, it's nice and clean. 
uh, took out the output uh, transistors, input transistors, the diodes. The diodes actually test just fine. Uh, they're I can't even really read uh, what it says here. It looks to be an MUR164OCT, and that's a pretty good, so pretty hefty a diode, and I do have that in my replacement parts. Okay, so yeah, that's what I'm replacing uh, the diodes with, which is pretty much the same thing, an MUR1640CTG. Uh, they're 400 volt, 16 amp uh, diode, of, or bridge, re they're rectifiers pretty much. I got four of them, and they're an exact replacement for the ones I took out. And I honestly did not test them. Uh, they're not even testing bad, but you know, since I'm already in here, I am going to replace it just the same. Okay, continuing on here with the Samlex power inverter, I've discovered a bit of a problem uh, with this inverter and spent a good part of the day looking into it and kind of basically checked every single part inside here. Uh, first, I thought I, re I installed the brand new FETs here, but when I went to go turn everything on, and I also replaced all the fuses. And what I realized was that I was still getting a dead short. And then with my clamp meter here, and I have a tiny little 12 volt battery, like a um, drill battery, this was immediately pulling 20, 30 amps a a as soon as you connect it up here. And then I have a little 10 amp circuit breaker that popped every time. Uh, the FETs were getting very hot. And I said, okay, that's obviously we still got a problem somewhere. It's, it's got to be shorted. So I went and so I'll check to see if these in, if these uh, input caps were shorted. They were not. Uh, output caps were not. The transformers have a primary and a secondary, and this, they were both fine. They're actually very low ohm, only about 0 0.2, 0 0.3 ohms per winding. Um, but when they're actually ganged in series, all the all the primaries are ganged in series, and then all the second uh, secondaries are ganged in series as well, and what wound up happening was that the reason why the FETs failed to begin with was, and this was what I was most afraid of, the drive circuitry uh, to the input section was no good. And I'll show you exactly where that's done. This chip here would normally go here. This is on one side. One side of it is the low voltage alarm. And um, let me see if I can try and focus it in for you guys. Okay, there we go. So on this one side, you have... And I apologize for the camera being shaky. Uh, on the one side here, you have the low voltage alarm. And then on the other side is your input drive circuitry. Now, if you can see very closely, and I'm going to try my best to try to get it in here. Okay, here we go. It looks good on my, from my uh, viewfinder here, so let's uh, go with that. Uh, look, if you look at Q1 and Q4, uh, they are singed and burned. And now Q2 and Q3 seem to have survived, but uh, this is the reason why um, it is not uh, operating co correctly. Basically, if half the transistors are shot, it's only pulling the polarity one way, so it makes sense. It is going to pull a lot of current in one phase, like if one phase of the alternating current that it's trying to make. So without the other transistor set to pull it back to, to zero and back 180 degrees out of phase, that is what's causing the FETs to burn up on the input section. So what I uh, also found out was that this board, the smarts of this board, of this uh, inverter is actually still good, which I'm happy for. This board actually operates the remote here. Now, with all the FETs removed and the drive circuitry removed, uh, I'm not getting any uh, amperage draw at all. And now when you turn this on, this will actually boot up as it should. Now it uh, it's currently in sleep mode, but if you see like when it comes on all the time, there's an output fault or input fault uh, indicator. Now the input fault was turned on, and that beeper was beeping constantly when it was installed onto the main circuit board, and the uh, green and yellow lights were on constantly. Now, and you really can't see it, but with the drive circuitry and uh, the FETs disabled, there's no way for it to self-diagnostic test, so you really can't see it, but the green light is on as if it were powered up. And unfortunately, that's uh, gonna be a little bit a little bit harder to fix, if I can fix it at all. 
Again, this is a surface mount component, which I do have the right tools to take it off, but with the transistors pretty much burned to a crisp, I don't know if I'm going to be able to uh, take a look at what those numbers are. I'm hoping that they're the same as Q2 and Q3, and I would imagine so, but uh, let me, I'm going to have to look up that part number and see if, that's, uh, if it's available, and try and fix it uh, one more time. Okay, this is to give you a better look at what you were looking at here on the drive, drive circuitry board here. Uh, those are the four um, SOT23 transistors, and you can see this one here and this one here have cracked in half and failed. Uh, these two on the top are the same ones, and these two on the bottom are the same ones. So thankfully, I was able to find uh, in my Mauser shopping cart uh, the uh, replacements that I need. These are NPN style transistors at SOT23, and then these are PNP style uh, transistors that go on the bottom. So I should be able to repair this uh, board with those two transistors. I'm also going to get a few more, uh, all, basically all the IC chips that are on these boards. Again, they're very, very cheap. Um, the Schmidt triggers, uh, you know, you really don't need to uh, be concerned of what these do. The only one that you really uh, would be concerned of which of what the operation is is the SG3525A. Uh, that's actually the IC that uh, fires the um, transistors to go back and forth in, on in the polarity. Um, this is what drives those transistors, and that's what uh, causes the uh, input FETs to operate as they should. So that's going to be my next attempt. And again, you know, these parts are not going to be too expensive when you can, when you consider, um, the, uh, w the cost of them and then obviously shipping with uh, that. But if it's hopefully that's all I need to do in order to get this thing running again, but, uh, that, uh, will be a to be continued. Now, obviously I won't be able to use my standard tools to get these things off. I actually have, uh, I haven't really used them very much because I don't really work on surface mount components that much, or I try not to. I have a Hako, uh, the hot tweezers that actually plugs into my uh, 88D uh, soldering workstation, and they're basically parallel removers. You go and grab the uh, component, the tips are hot, and then you can lift the component right off the board. And as far as putting the new ones back on, you take a little pen, with the uh, flux on it, wipe it on the on the board, and then you can then use your uh, soldering tip to uh, flow the solder onto the board itself. And then this is where a good uh, magnifying glass comes in handy. And that's pretty much it as far as surface mount components. Thankfully, uh, I was able to get a good shot of the uh, numbers here. Now these numbers are they they give you an they give you basically the um, specifications and when you know you just pop in a google search you type in this number type in j3y transistors and then you can actually pull up the data sheet same thing for this one so this is going to conclude the repair for right now and uh when i get these parts in i will uh update with and see where the repair has gone from there and this is pretty much my last ditch effort to uh to get it running if this doesn't fix it then i don't know what will